Hey, everybody. Yori Chisholm here. Uh, happy Friday afternoon to you. Um, I just thought I would hop on the channel here and do a live video just to catch up and uh, let you know some of the things that are going on around here at bagpipelessons.com. Um, and what's coming up in the future. I've had a, a little bit of a busy month with some traveling, but um, should be back here for the next little while until my kids are done with school in June. So I did uh, one of these live videos back in March, and I thought I was going to get on and just talk for 10 minutes about the future of the channel and some of the stuff I have planned um, for BagpipeLessons.com website and products and, um, and the YouTube channel. And I ended up talking for over half an hour. So I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to keep it to hopefully around um, 10 or 15 minutes here. But um, I wanted to give you a, a couple updates quick. Last month, I launched my master class, which Bagpipe Essentials master class, which is 31 videos on all the essentials of bagpipe technique. So this will take you all the way from the very beginning. If you're just starting out and your practice channel through the basic notes of the scale, how to put your hands on the channel, all the way through grace notes, doublings, all of our embellishments. Uh, our nine doublings um, are four low G bass movements, which are grip, torlua, burl, and D throw, crossing noises. So that has been very popular since we launched that. <clears throat> so check that out at bagpipelessons.com slash masterclass. If you're a beginner, it's perfect for you. If you have some experience and you're just looking to get a more solid understanding of all your embellishments and how to play them perfectly, check out the master class. Links to everything I talk about, I'll add to the description below, but that's bagpipelessons.com slash masterclass. Another thing that we, we uh, launched this past month was a new deal on the Infinity Chanter. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're on my email list, or you follow bagpipelessons.com on social media, you know that I'm a big believer in the Infinity Chanter from R.G. Hardy. This is an amazing pipe chanter. Um, yeah, got one right here. It's an amazing pipe chanter, and what I love about it, what I love about it, is the amazing sound and the smaller holes. So especially on the bottom hand, the holes are way smaller than a lot of other chanters on the market, and the smaller holes makes it easier to play, feels more comfortable and all of your execution is cleaner. And I really mean that. So when you, uh, if you've been playing a channel with larger holes, when you try this Infinity channel, you're just gonna be shocked in a good way about how good it feels. The Blackwood version of the Infinity is the most comfortable channel I've ever played. They add a little extra um, feature to the Blackwood channel that they don't on the plastic one, which is they round out, they sand off the edges of the holes. So it's very smooth and it feels like a channel that you've been playing for years. It has that really nice broken in feel. Um, and this infinity channel, when you first play it, you're just going to love it. And so much so that you may not want to play your other chanters again. So just have that warning. So what we announced this year on the bagpipelessons.com shop, <clears throat> excuse me, is you can now get a tone protector at a discounted price when you buy it with your Infinity Channer. So we're selling tons of, the, tons of these already. So go to um, bagpipelessons.com slash infinity, and that will take you to the Infinity Channer page. There's three choices. You can get the Blackwood Infinity Channer, which is the top of the line channer. You can get the Poly Infinity Channer, which is the this plastic one. And they make a special one in poly, which is B flat. So I'm going to be going to be working on an email and a video about this whole idea of playing in B flat. But if you want to play with other instruments that have a fixed pitch, like piano, guitar, um, organ, orchestral instruments, you're going to want to have a fixed pitch channer. So it's a special channer where the when you play low A, it matches the exact note of B flat on those other instruments. So you can also get the poly one the Impoly Infinity Channer in B flat. And you probably want to get the drone read extenders for that. So I'm going to make a whole new video on that, but we've been selling a ton of those too. And now you can add a tone protector, humidity controlling channer cap to your Infinity and get a, a good deal on it. And then finally, I just want to remind everybody about my inner circle, my bagpipelessons.com, bagpipelessons.com inner circle. Uh, you get two main things with that. You get access to my weekly live Zoom classes. 
that I do, and you can just join those live on Zoom. And we record all those and started these in, in 2020. So we are well into the hundreds of these classes that have been recorded, and you can go back and watch them. And then also have a lesson library where we have all the recorded lessons and all my other materials and hundreds and hundreds of lessons on, on there on every piping topic. So you can get all that for a really good deal. Um, go to bagpipelessons.com slash membership. And I would love to have you as a member of my inner circle. So, okay, got that out of the way. So what I want to do today is just I haven't prepared at all other than I have a list of questions that people um, email me through my website or through Facebook. And I've been collecting all these email emails with questions and then responses. And I thought I'd just go th through some of these. And I won't mention people by name, of course. Um, but I thought it would be really helpful because we do get some of the same questions um, that, that keep coming back. And they're, you know, I think kind of common issues. So we're just going to kind of start at the top here, some of the most recent ones. So somebody writes, as a beginner and as and of an older age, I'm finding that trying to be consistent with my training approach, as there is so much information that is different, and try to dismiss what is not relevant at this early stage of my training. Right. So this is in response to an email that I send out to people when they've downloaded one of my free guides. And if you go to the learn page, bagpipelessons.com slash learn, you'll see links to, I have a whole bunch of free guides, you know, how to get the most out of your online lessons, stuff about tuning, stuff about tone, blowing, um, how to avoid mistakes, that sort of thing. They're all free. So you can sign up and, and click those links and, and you'll get those, those free guides emailed to you. But in one of those emails that I, that I send out to people who download these, these guides, I'll ask, what are your pipe, your biggest piping challenges? Get some really good, um, get some good, really, some really good responses. And those, in addition to, you know, responding and being able to help those, those people with their questions, that really helps me as an instructor find out what people are struggling with and what the questions, pe questions people have. So if you're a beginner at an older age, how do you cut through all of the noise and all the information and focus on what's really important? So the great thing about the internet is that there's a lot of information out there, but that's one of the challenges. So what you need to do at a beginning level is focus on building a solid foundation. And what that means primarily is on the practice tenor stage is making sure you have good, clean technique with good form. And good form means keeping your hands as relaxed as possible and keeping your fingers in as close as possible to the chanter. So not tight and not fingers high. You want the fingers in nice and close and keep them relaxed. It's very important to do this at the beginning stages because as you progress and as you learn more embellishments and more tunes, your foundation of technique that you set at this early stage will continue. So I've met all kinds of pipers at different levels of their piping career where they're having to go back and relearn and undo bad habits and and go back to the to the basics. So that's what I would recommend. I mentioned earlier my Bagpipe Essentials Masterclass. I think that's a great place to start. It goes through all of the basics of technique. You have that class and you go through those videos, these really high quality videos of 31 of them. You are gonna have a very good understanding of bagpipe technique. <clears throat> and you'll be able to make, you'll be able to know that you are practicing your basic technique correctly. And that's gonna give you a lot of confidence. You need, don't need to keep looking on YouTube for stuff, for free stuff. That will give you what you need to start on the right path. You do want a teacher, but if you don't have a teacher and you wanna focus on getting a solid foundation, check out my masterclass. Next person says, uh, I really struggle with keeping my grace notes short, reading music and getting the most out of my movements. Any suggestions? So that's a bunch of different things. Grace notes need to be really, really small. That's the key. Tiny grace notes, not big grace notes. One of the earliest videos on the bagpipelessons.com YouTube channel is called Secrets of Top Pipers and it's all about grace note size. So check it out. Really the difference is, do you want a grace note to be just a little tiny blip 
or you want to have a giant grace note. And when you keep your grace notes small, they sound clean and crisp. Versus. So watch that video. Anyone who has told you that you need to keep your grace notes big so that they're clear, that is not the secret. The secret is tiny grace notes. And the way you do that, you keep those grace notes short, is by keeping your hands relaxed and keep bringing them in close to the channel. It's a mistake to try to make them small by putting a lot of muscle or a lot of tension into it. So keep them small. Reading music is a whole other challenge. What I recommend that you do is that you start with your simplest exercises, whether you're getting your exercises from your teacher or you're working your way through uh, one of these piping books, go back to the beginning from the simple single note exercises or basic grace note exercises and follow along and read. Even if you have the exercise memorized, I think it's that's how you learn to read music is you follow along with your eyes and you struggle through it. I've seen people that write the letters, the names of the notes under their the notes of the sheet music. I recommend you don't do that. That will help you in the short term, but what you're doing is you're basically translating the sheet music into letters, and then you're just reading the letters. So um, I don't let any of my students do that, and I encourage them to just go for it and practice reading the music from the notes without writing the letters in, and um, it's amazing how fast it goes. You got to stick with it. Do it every day. Do it for 5, 10, 15 minutes every day. <clears throat> And it gets better. And anyone that I meet at a workshop or if they come to me after doing this letter writing thing for a while, I just say, okay, that's fine up to this point. But from now on, with any new tunes that we're going to do, we're not going to write those in. And um, it'll be a little bit of a struggle and adjustment period, but it's worth it for sure. Another person saying, um, my piping goal is to get worse as slowly as possible. In other words, what are some effective strategies to avoid or mask the inevitable age-related declines in finger speed and agility, accuracy, in finding and covering the channel holes? Um, yeah, so this is a great question. As we progress through life, we get older, there are lots of things that happen. And one of the things that can happen is you can lose some finger dexterity. This is why it's so important, regardless of the age that you're at, is that you focus on having good form. Even if you're a young person and you have great finger dexterity, you will be better. You'll be able to play cleaner and faster with more consistency if you have good form. <clears throat> it's, it's important for every age. So again, keeping the fingers and the hands as relaxed as possible and keeping the fingers in close to the channel. That's the key for every edge. And what that does is that allows you to play in a way that is more conducive to longevity and consistency and overall health. Um, when we talk about ergonomics, we're talking about how can we take a physical object, a tool or a, a piece of equipment, like a piece of sports equipment or a piece of musical equipment, like your pipes or your chanter, and how can you take that and how can you make it work with your body in the most biomechanically friendly way. And that's what ergonomics is. And that's also the foundation of, or that's that's the, the foundation for why we want to have good form so that we can play what we want to play in a way that works most efficiently and effectively with our hands and our instrument and our body. Okay. Here's a question. The person says their biggest challenge is setting up the bagpipes and tuning the drones. So that is a huge topic. I could talk for hours on that topic, but I would say um, check out a couple of the videos on the YouTube channel. Um, in particular, check out the ones about tuning the drones with the in-tune mic. Now, I know a lot of people want to be able to tune their drones by ear, the old-fashioned way. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that. That is a skill that can take a, life, a lifetime to master. Um, it's worth learning how to do it, 
But in my experience, the fastest way to learn how to tune your bagpipes on your own is using a tuner and a microphone. So check out my Intune mic, uh, intunemic.com, and check out the videos on the YouTube channel about how to use the Intune mic and the bra tuner with your smartphone to get your pipes in tune. Everybody loves to play their pipes so much more when they're in tune, and the Intune mic and the bra tuner will help you do that. It will also help you refine your ear so that you can tune your pipes on your own. I was talking to a student recently and he was playing his pipes for a very good piper. Um, and, the, and the very good piper said, wow, your pipes sound really great. Did you tune them on your own? He said, I did using Yori's Intune mic and, and the tuner. And he said, I got them really just about as perfect as I could. And then I just, using my ear, I just did a fine tuning adjustment on the bass tone and that was perfect. So I thought that was a great example of how using your smartphone and the mic and the tuner can help you get your pipes in tune fast and also helps you develop your ear because he'd been practicing with the tuner and the mic for several months now. He was able to hear that little difference of that bass drone and he was able to make that little adjustment there. I also have some um, videos on the YouTube channel about setting up drone reads and also setting up and choosing chanter reads. So check that out. Setting up bagpipes is a huge topic and I'll be making more videos on this topic, but really it's you know making sure your pipes are airtight, um, making sure that your drone reads are operating properly, and that's a big topic. Sometimes you just need new drone reads, so check out the drone read video. And then probably the most important component of the bagpipe sound is the chanter read itself. So watch the chanter read video, and it's all about picking chanter reads, adjusting the strength of chanter reads, and the crucial importance of the moisture content in that channel read and what you can do to stabilize it using a tone protector or my tone protector read case. So that's a really, really important video to watch in terms of making sure that your channel read is operating correctly and efficiently. Also, you can check out the video on blowing steady. That's not exactly the same as setup, but um, if you're, if you're talking about what are the things we can do to make our pipes comfortable and sound great and stay in tune and efficient, um, check out the video on blowing steady because that's the big part of the tone production. The tone production of the bagpipes is the blowing and the squeezing. And also with my bagpipe gauge, you can get a, you can use it to get a reading for how hard your pipes are. So often pipers have this question, something doesn't feel right about their instrument is it something wrong with my bagpipes or is it me? So when I'm working with a student remotely and they have that question, the first thing I ask them is, well, what does your, your bagpipe gauge showing you? Because the gauge will show you if you're steady with your blowing, but it'll also give you a measurement for how hard your pipes are. And if your pipes are reading 35 or something, I would say there's something wrong with your pipes. Your read is too hard or there's something that's there's leaking. Where on the other hand, if, if it's giving a good reading, say in the upper 20s or low 30s, then you know that the pipes are probably okay. Maybe you need to practice more. Maybe there's something that we can optimize with your technique. So, so anyway, let's just wrap it up there for today. Um, thanks everybody who's watching live. And if you're watching on the replay and you have a question, just uh, shoot it in the comments. I will keep an eye on this comment thread and I'm gonna be doing more of these live um, Q and A kind of deals. Uh, uh, coming up soon here, and I will answer your questions there. Check out bagpipelessons.com slash learn. That's the learn page. It's got links to my videos and my free guides. And check out the bagpipelessons.com shop at bagpipelessons.com slash shop for tone protectors and bagpipe gauges and Intune mics and all the great equipment. And we're getting new members signing up for my inner circle every day. So check out my inner circle membership with my live online group classes and a massive lesson library with, I mean, I haven't counted, but hundreds, I would say thousands and thousands of hours of content on there for you to enjoy on every piping topic. So check that out at bagpipelessons.com slash membership. And finally, make sure to subscribe to the bagpipelessons.com YouTube channel. Every time, if you like my videos and you like this one and you like my other videos, subscribe because that helps YouTube know that you like my videos 
and it helps promote my videos to other pipers like you who might like them. So I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Have a great weekend. Happy piping.